One of the most powerful things in video games, I think, is the interconnection between different pieces of music. To me, it's one of the things that separates video games from so many different other types of media. The idea that you can have a piece of music that not only reflects a particular scene, but reflects a character, a place, a feeling, an environment, and so much more. And there's no better series which demonstrates this than Zero Escape. Zero Escape is a series which encapsulates three main games. Nine Hours, Nine Person, Nine Doors, Virtue's Last Reward, and Zero Time Dilemma. Now, the original music by Shinji Hoso is really important because it's a good example of where the composer uses particular motifs and phrases and repeats them throughout the entirety of the series to portray different characters, different events, different feelings, and for a series based on time, that's incredibly important and valuable. Now Zero Escape has a really interesting sonic identity. It's incredibly unique. By sonic identity I'm talking about the sounds, the textures, the musical ideas, which all encapsulate the entirety of Zero Escape. It's one of those things where if you hear a piece from a Mario game, for example, you just know it's a Mario piece. Or if you hear a piece from Final Fantasy, you know it belongs in a Final Fantasy game. In the same way that if you hear a piece from Zero Escape, you kind of just know that, yes, this is a Zero Escape piece. And there are various different features which help to explain why that's the case. So the easiest way to demonstrate this is to start grouping tracks from Zero Escape into certain categories. And what I mean by that is that when you have a certain category of pieces in Zero Escape, all the tracks associated with whatever theme that is tend to sound very similar to each other. So for example, we start with your puzzle themes. Now, no surprises here, they tend to lack a sort of clear melodic structure, but they have a sense of heavy rhythm, repetition, a sense of urgency as well, and as a result they all sound incredibly similar across all three games. Then we have what I can only describe as your, like, anxiety pieces, the pieces which make you feel like, oh damn, something's about to happen. These are pieces like Tinderbox, Foreboding from 999, Strain from Virtue's Last Reward, and Trepidation from 999 and Zero Time Dilemma. Then we have the discovery pieces, the pieces where you actually feel like you're gaining some information, you feel like you're actually understanding a bit more about how the world works. It's like that sort of light bulb moment where you're like, oh okay, I finally get it now. These are pieces like Digital Root from 999 and Clarification from Virtue's Last Reward. And again, I don't even need to repeat it, but they sound incredibly similar to each other in terms of the style that they're going for. That brings us to our exploration pieces. Now personally I've always found it kind of ironic that you have certain tracks like Riddle and Puzzle from 999 and Placidity from Virtue's Last Reward, which are much more laid back and calmer, almost like we're not in some urgent situation where we really need to get out of the place we're currently in. And finally we have the pieces with significant storytelling. These are the moments which signify some sort of significant storytelling or moment or idea across all three games and they all just sound like ballads really. Very similar in style, very melodic, very very lyrical in nature. These are the big ones, Morphogenetic Sorrow, Bluebird Lamentation, Interminable Dilemma and many more. Now this is where the soundtrack of Zero Escape takes it much further than just establishing similarities between pieces. It's all about the interconnection between certain tracks within the series. And in order to explore that in more detail, we're going to be focusing on, on one particular piece. The most famous piece in the entire series, Morphogenetic Sorrow. And in particular, what we're going to look at is how the phrases and ideas of Morphogenetic Sorrow appear in so many other songs throughout the entirety of the series. And as well as this, I'm going to take this a bit further as well and expand upon how Shinji Hosa repeats certain ideas and phrases in numerous pieces across the entire series. Some of them are clearly intentional, and others maybe not as intended, but still really, really important in establishing context, characters, emotions, and so much more. Now let's start with a basic run through of Morphogenetic Sorrow. It's comprised of four sections. Here's the first section. The second. The 
third. And the fourth. Now the reason I mentioned these four sections is because I'm now going to play you different tracks in Zero Escape and demonstrate exactly where these motifs from Morphogenetic Sorrow come up. For the purpose of this, I've transposed the key of Morphogenetic Sorrow to whatever the key of the reference track is. I was just having fun at this point. This one's a bit of a stretch. And finally, one that explains itself. Using a particular phrase, and making that phrase appear in different pieces, in different contexts, in different scenes across all three games are really obvious examples of leitmotifs, but I think it's a lot deeper than that. For example, the piece Nine Years reminds me an awful lot of Morphogenetic Sorrow, and it took me a while to think of, why is that the case? I was listening back to the pieces today, and if we listen to them, they don't actually sound that similar at all. So it poses the question then of, why does this remind me of Morphogenetic Sorrow? And then it got me realising that it's deeper than just a musical phrase. It's more of a musical idea. There are three things that I'd point to to identify why they sound very similar to each other. The first one is the musical phrases themselves. Now, when it comes to Bluebird Lamentation and Nine Years, they literally use part of the same phrase in a section of the track. That's something which you might have heard before. Another similarity though, a much more intricate one, is between Morphogenetic Sorrow and Nine Years. In a section of Morphogenetic Sorrow we hear da 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 and in Nine Years we hear da da da. The second thing is the change in the chord structure for those particular sections of Morphogenetic Sorrow, Nine Years and Bluebird Lamentation. We hear a change to a two chord structure.
And it's that two chord structure for me which makes those pieces sound incredibly familiar to each other. And I'm not saying they sound the same because they don't, but it's that familiarity which helps to reinforce a particular idea or motif. And the third thing is just a bit of an interesting thing that I've identified, and it's that that change in the melody and the chord structure always seems to happen in the third section of these pieces. Now, I don't think this is some sort of story thing, although it's Zero Escape, so anything could be a story thing at this point. But I just find it really interesting from a composing perspective that that change to the two chord structure and the change in the nature of the piece always happens in Shinji Hoso's third section of the song. At the beginning of this video, I mentioned two words, sonic identity, the idea that a particular composer, game, series has a particular sound to them. Something which you can use to directly associate the music with the particular thing. And Zero Escape is an excellent example of that. Re-listening to many of the pieces in Zero Escape made me realise that there's so much more to talk about in terms of really interesting pieces. The puzzle themes in particular are excellent examples of exactly what I'm talking about, and I'd be happy to do a video talking about them in more detail. But I hope you enjoyed this video. Um, I really enjoyed the process of actually going through and re-listening to everything and finding these small connections and everything. And I'm really certain that there are many more that I must have missed. So if there are any that you identified, let me know in the comments. Let's keep the discussion going. Also, feel free to join my Discord because there are many Zero Escape lovers in there too. So it'd be great to keep the conversation going there. Until next time, thanks for watching and take care.